Hello everybody, Dave from Arachnids, back day again. I'm uh, going to do something a tad bit different today. Um, I generally don't do rehousings on video, and I don't know how this one's actually going to go. But uh, if you look, this is Thorin. Uh, you can see the ring light reflection there, but uh, Samuel Pace Poker, male, at least suspected male anyway, will get a better idea once we get him in this cup. Um, why am I rehousing him? Because his enclosure is all set up beautifully for him. But if you look here in the corner, this has just popped up over the course of the last week or so. Uh, now I sprayed him down um, and gave him water. You know, I misted the plants like I generally do with him to give him water on his webbing. Uh, and it all seemed to filter right here, and you could see the mass amount of mold. So this has got to go. Um, he's been in this since I got him so it, it's been a year and a half uh, he's been in here so uh, I generally don't do um, rehousings because of you know the, the, the necessity to be cleaning the substrate unless we have major issues like this one now generally with small amounts of mold like this I will just stir it back up in the substrate it'll go away you let it dry out it'll, it'll disappear this is not going to go away so we're going to get him out of here uh, we're going to clean the enclosure we're going to clean the uh, decorations um, we'll get the uh, leaves out is his branches that he likes to hide around and on um, clean the whole entire enclosure get all the webbing out and we're going to put them back in now it's not easy to to rehouse these guys so this is the method that I use and let me let me pause you and I will set you guys back up I'm going to have to hold you here uh, just to show you. I'm not going to be able to do this on film, I don't think. <laughs> um, I'll try, but I doubt it's going to, because I need to, to maneuver this enclosure and, you know, get it to where I get to the point where I can actually get to him. So I have my catch cup up top, and this catch cup has bunches of holes, not just a hole in the middle. I see a lot of people just put holes in the middle, and they're struggling trying to move their tarantulas because they get to one side or the other. And it's so much easier if you just put a bunch of holes around the, the outside rim and then one in the middle. Uh, and then I actually added four more there as extra spots, just in case. There's also holes on the sides and then holes down here, just in case we need them to, you know, if the tarantula gets to this point, we need them to get up a little farther. We could stick something in there and, and prompt them up. I, I think it's a lot of people actually do that with, with these catch cups. They only put one hole in the top. And they are struggling with a paintbrush or, you know, a, a wooden skewer. I use these. Okay, these these are wooden skewers. You get a pack of these for like 99 cents. And then I, there's no sharp point. I cut the sharp point off of them. So, actually, I cut the sharp point off and I used them as a. Here, here it is right there. It's the uh, lock mechanism to keep the door closed there. So, uh, yeah. So now all I would do is, um, you know, I can use points here you can see I moved made four points here these will give me access to get to the tarantula down lower uh, and then once we get it up get him up higher I can actually maneuver this around you know if need be to get him in there so I'm gonna do my best to do this but I don't think I'm gonna actually be able to do this on film just because of the angle uh, and, and the camera being in my way I have to start doing different filming methods um, but it's, it's not going to happen now. I could use the kitchen table, but my wife's done with work. So I'm, unless she's not here, I can't film out there. So, uh, yeah, let me, let me pause this. I'll get him up in the catch cup, and then I'll explain to you guys, once I get him in there, how I actually did it. It'll be a lot easier. Okay, so first part of the process is getting obstacles out of your way. So we pulled this out. Uh, he's not wanting, oops, he's not wanting to crawl up. So what we need to do now, because the substrate's usually compact, is I'll generally lay this down at an angle, you know. So we'll take the, you to be careful that this thing doesn't pop off. You know, these deli cups are actually perfect for these things. So, yeah, if I have two hands, though. Um, generally, I'll lay it, I'll start to tip it down like so. And once I get to this point, nothing falls. It's a lot easier to get him just to go this way instead of trying to get him to crawl up. So I'm going to do that now and uh, hopefully uh, he won't give me too much of a fuss. 
Okay, everybody. Uh, this one is in the catch cup. And now that it's in the catch cup, I have a funny feeling that I may have three females. Um, ventrally, this one looks exactly the same as the two confirmed females. I do not see... There is a spot on the cup right where that section is. There is that small little spot right above the skewer there. Um, that could be at the Andrus fuselite, but I don't believe it is. I don't think that the area is big enough. And the way that the uh, Epigandrus furrow here is actually formed, I have a funny feeling that we are three for three on females of this species. So, that's going to be quite interesting. I will have to go back over. Uh, some of the ventral pictures that I took, what I'll do is I'll take a nice ventral picture of her, or him, I believe her, uh, and then compare it to the ventrals that I took of both um, Loki and Salem, my other two females, and then compare them. Um, but I do have a funny feeling, just based on what I see, that we have a third female. Now this one molted not too long ago, it took almost a year, and... I was like, oh man, well, maybe it's male, I don't know. Again, there's water spots on this thing right here. You can see the spots on this. So I can't be 100% positive. I'm going to have to get her or him into a different spot on the in the cup. But uh, once we get this new, you know, the enclosure re uh, all cleaned out, put back together again, um, we might be able to see on the clear plastic without any spots on it uh, and get a better idea. So what I did... Okay, let me let me get him out of the way. I'm gonna call him him until he proves me otherwise. Is again, I just laid this enclosure down, and with the holes, you know, you guys are already out. The holes that I put in right here, as you can see, I just added these holes, and I added these with this while Thorn was still in there. This reamer. Okay, you just push it up against there, and you can make holes. Now I'm going to add a couple more holes to this enclosure. Uh, there are holes down low here, as you can see. I'm going to increase the size of these and then add holes here and here and then the same on the other end. Uh, this way, no matter which way this enclosure turns, there's always holes on every single side. And then these four holes up top will help chimney the chimney effect going on. It'll also give me an opportunity to use um, those holes to man manipulate the tarantula out again if I need to. Hopefully I won't have to for a while. It should be fine and you know these one gallon mainstays are pretty good for these type of tarantulas, arboreal tarantulas for for a while. I mean I I know people that keep adult sized piece of lotharia in here and these these some will paste bulk are get nowhere near the adult size of post lotharia so or piece of lotharia. Um, so yeah, I'm not overly concerned with that, but I am a little disconcerned with the mold. Uh, so we're going to see how the new burpees um, cocoa core does um, in an enclosure that I do generally uh, miss down, you know, the, the leaves and, and the silk just in case, uh, because it, it did. If you look at, I've had to redo this a handful of times, uh, he it, or she enjoyed to web over the water dish there. So it got to be a little tough. Um, to give it water because the, the web would wick it right out. So I've had to destroy the webbing there. I can't tell you how many times that he or she just, you know, webs it right back over again. So that's why I would spray this one down in the, you know, the plant um, just to give it some drinking water. <clears throat> now when the water dish is empty or it's accessible and the water stays in there, this tarantula is a pretty good drinker of water. So I do like to make sure that there's water available uh, as often as possibly can. Both this one and my other female, Loki. Salem's not so much, uh, but Salem's water dish is on the ground. So I may add something up higher for her and see if uh, that changes things. But I will spray her enclosure completely down um, probably once every two weeks 
I generally would give her a complete spray down, except for the lid. You can see I need to, to clean her. There she is right there, as a matter of fact. I need to clean the front part where she's pooped all over the place. And I just, what I'll do is I'll take a piece of plywood, not plywood, but uh, cardboard or a piece of uh, extra plexiglass that I have. We'll open this up and I'll slide that on there and it'll sit there and it'll contain the tarantula in here. And then I can wipe this all down without any problems. The problem is, is like spots up here. And what I use is, you know, the painting sponges, they, they, you know, they kind of look like black and they have contours to them and bevels. Um, I will spray those down with distilled water and then I'll get in there and I will scrub that down. Um, we have to make sure that she's in the backside and hiding, uh, which she generally will when I'm doing stuff like that. And then uh, I'll take a dry one just to kind of wipe it off. I try to keep my hands out of there. Uh, that's why I use the, the paint brushes instead of just, you know, spraying in there and going in there with a paper towel. Um, I don't like to give them an opportunity to bite me, and I don't like to give any of my tarantulas a reason to flick hairs, even though these ones don't because they don't have that ability. But uh, I try to keep it so that they, they contain their normal looks and not flick hairs all over the place. So, And I don't want to get bit by, by her. Plus, I don't want her getting out, so... Okay, let's uh, get this enclosure all cleaned out, and uh, I will show you what we come up with once we're all done. Okay, everybody, we got the enclosure all cleaned out. We have the tarantula up on top. I actually put the ring light on top so you didn't have that um, glare. So what we're going to do is just kind of try and get this one back down. It shouldn't be too difficult. I have a hole right here. You can see so it's perfect tight to just kind of coax them down and uh, we'll get the lid back on Come on, little buddy nice and easy go back home there you go That helps if I have the lid for the enclosure handy, doesn't it? What did I do with it? There it is, on the floor. Okay, lid's on. Now well, it's on, but it's not screwed on. There we go. seeing that but we'll put the light back this is when the light doesn't work very well you actually need the light up here but there we are all rehoused all clean same piece of wood there was no mold on the wood same leaves we kind of cleaned those off all nice and looking green again um, he is a pretty good webber so I expect him or her to reweb everything um, I'm I'm really looking at this one and I really, really believe it's female. I'm going to get some macro shots since it's sitting right here. And uh, we'll see everybody later. I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, adventure. It uh, wasn't anything spectacular by no means. But at least you get an idea of how I rehouse a lot of my tarantulas. I generally use that, that method. Um, smaller little ones I'll put into a huge, bigger enclosure. And just kind of coax them out. Let them run around the enclosure. Get them into a smaller cup and then transfer them into their new home. I've used this method in, you know, things like the OBT, or we'll put that deli cup that you saw in the enclosure with the OBT, and then I have a piece of um, pixie glass that fits over top of some of those enclosures with a bunch of holes in it, and then I can coax the OBT up and into the cup. But once they're in there, they feel safe because they have that, there's no air moving around them anymore, and they, they kind of huddle in the back end, just stick your hand in there and put the, the lid on. Um, they generally will not run back out of those cups. I've had a few that uh, I have a hard time getting out of the cups, like to, to uh, ship them. We'll get them into the deli cup, and I can't get them out of the deli cup into their packing container because they get down into it and they crawl right back up. That just takes patience. You have to be patient. You can't rush them. Uh, if you rush them, then either they're going to get injured or you're going to have a problem. So thanks for watching. We'll see everybody again in the next one. You'll see this one again in the... Panama Tarantula Tour with the Worldwide Tarantula Tour video. 
Uh, you will see all three of these polkers hopefully. And uh, we'll talk to everybody soon.